Okay. Well, we're back again. Praise the Lord. And we're going to continue today talking about the gospel. The good news. Is this gospel that we preach all around the world? All around the world to everybody. Is this gospel a gospel of prosperity? Is this a prosperity message? Is the gospel? I'm asking you that question. What do y'all think? Amen. I think it's nothing but prosperity. That's right. I think it's prosperity in every area of life. Every area of a person's life who comes from the pit, in a sense, to the palace. That's right. You become the son or daughter of a king. Mm -hmm. of, of the king, not of That's a right. king. That's right. But of the king. Only one king. That's right. And that's Jesus Christ. Amen. So, but we're back again, and so we want to. I want to go back over a little few, a few things, to reiterate some of the things that we've been talking about. One of the things uh, we want to do is, first of all, we always want to go to Scripture. And we always want to consult the author and the finisher of our faith. So turn with me to the book of First Corinthians, chapter 15, where we all know the gospel is where the gospel is spelled out by Paul. Okay? And then uh, we want to go ahead and pray and talk to the Lord, okay? So, at this time, let's pray. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Dear Father God, we come before you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We come thanking you for this day, thanking you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to hear your word, share your word, and be a part of what you are doing in this hour. We ask, Lord God, that you would forgive us of any sin that we may have committed against you. We ask, O oh Lord, to allow us to decrease, that you may increase. Have your way in this place. Speak to your people. I yield to you my mind, body, and soul. Take this vessel of clay and use it any way you see fit. Be glorified in me. And I'll give you all the honor, glory, and praise. I thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and it reads, Moreover, brother, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye have saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain 
unto this present hour. But some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, and then of all, then of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also, as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that I'm not me to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace was bestowed upon me, which was, okay, and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which is with me, which was with me, I'm sorry. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach. And so ye believe. Amen? Amen. Now we know that this is the gospel in the nutshell. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, that Jesus died for the sins of all humanity, for each one of us. Uh, we've also, we've gone. Uh, we've well, let's talk about, let me give you some definition, a definition right quick. I want to talk to you about the definition of, uh, I want to share the definition of prosperity. The definition of prosperity is the, the, the condition of being successful or thriving, especially economic well-being. Now, I'm saying especially economic well-being, but there are other ways of prosperity, as we've been talking about, and as we've been mentioning, um, that the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about the condition of being successful or thriving. And it's uh, thriving means character by, characterized by success or prosperity. I think it is a success to go from sin to righteousness in the eyes of God. Because when we walk around in sin, guess what? He's not for us. He's against us. His hand is against you when you live in sin. It's only when you ask Him, when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and then be forgiven for the sins in which you've committed. Then you go from sin, a state of a sinner, to a state of righteousness. Only through the blood of Jesus. You see? So, this is what salvation has done for us through Jesus Christ. We've gone from one sin to righteousness, from two, turmoil to peace, from three, sadness to joy, four, hatred to love, five, enemies to fellowship, I mean to friendships, I'm sorry. Six, poverty to wealth. Okay? And today, we're going to be talking about from sickness and disease to health and healing. According to the scripture. So if you have pen and paper, write these scriptures down. And I hope you've been writing them down from the whole, uh, this whole series. So that you can study these things while you're at home by yourself. Let me tell you another thing that I've neglected to mention. I study the words of, from Hebrew and Greek out of the Strong's Concordance to the Bible. Okay? The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. 
The New Testament was written in Greek. Okay? I also use the Bible in which I, I, I am an avid user of. I use it all the time in every study. So you'll never see me. I may use other translations to help you understand what it's saying. But I am a King James Bible user. I use the King James the authorized version of the King James Bible. Not the New King James, the original King James Bible. Okay? So when I translate the Hebrew and Greek, I'm translating it, one, from the King James, which I believe is the closest to the text, to the original. Um, and I use the Strong's Concordance to break these words down, okay, so that you can break the scripture down. You see, I also use the Amplified Bible. You know, there will be times you'll see me using the Amplified, the Message Bible, you know, things like that. Um, to help you understand more and more of the scripture. Okay? But I read and study and was raised on the King James Version of the Bible. Okay? So that's what we are using in this series. Okay? So now that we got that out of the way, we also, like I said, we are talking about the six. I mean, the seventh thing that we've been delivered from, and I like to say, and delivered to, you see, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, according to the scripture. We, all these things, if I'm in the kingdom of his dear son, do you think sickness and disease has the right to reside in the kingdom of God's Son? Do you think that that's a place that sickness and disease would be? The Bible tells me that I've been delivered from the power of darkness. Woo! Amen. That's out of the book of Colossians. And translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Now let me, let me let's, let's go there. Let's go to the book of Colossians real quick. Chapter 1. And if I'm not mistaken, I think in the first, hey, I'm not sure. No, it's not. Who has delivered us? There it is, 1.13. Let's look at that. Let's look at 13. 1.13. I was mistaken. But look at Colossians 1.13. Now watch this. I want to share something with you. I, mean, I want you to see this as we do this. Okay? Now watch. It says, who hath, which is God. The who is God. Okay? He says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Okay? Now watch this. Darkness here, the word darkness, represents, write this down, From the power of darkness is sin, Satan, and Satan's kingdom. Okay? I want you to see this. 
Now, now check this out. Who is God? If you read the scripture, you read the chapter, you'll show, it'll show you that it is God. Okay? That he's talking about. So watch what he's saying. Who hath delivered us, the who is God. God hath delivered us from the power of, listen to this, Satan, sin, and Satan's kingdom. You see that? Who hath delivered us from the power of Satan, sin, and Satan's kingdom. Now watch. And have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now watch. I don't know if you know the story, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. In the book of Acts, there was a eunuch. And he was on a he was on a journey, and the Holy Spirit told Philip to go and join himself to that individual. And he got up on the chariot or got up on the spot with the individual. And the individual was reading scripture that he did not know and understand. And it was scripture about the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So, Philip told him about the scripture and broke the scripture down to where the man had given his life to Jesus and then was saying to Philip, well, Here's a body of water. What's stopping me from being baptized now? And Philip said, nothing. Come on, let's go. So they got off of the transportation that they were in, went down into the water, and Philip baptized the man. Okay? The man came up and turned around and looking with joy, and Philip was gone. Don't know where he went. But he was translated by the Holy Ghost. Taken completely away. Okay? Now watch. Go back to Colossians again and look at this. Who had delivered us from the power of sin, Satan, and Satan's kingdom, and have, let's look at this, boom, you've disappeared and translated us into the kingdom, into the kingdom of his dear son. Now watch, watch this. It's like this. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and He came into your heart, okay? When you accepted Him, the chains of darkness, of Satan, and His kingdom were broken. Okay? So what God did was He literally translated Meaning, he picked you up just like you ever see those um, those uh, a, a junkyard, and where cars are being crushed in the junkyard. But there's this big magnet that's on this crane that he takes over. He drops it down, and the magnet picks up that car and takes it over to where it's going to drop it into the compressor that compacts the car? Well, when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, that's exactly what happened. 
When you gave your life, the chains was broken. The Holy Ghost, through God, said, whoop, went down, picked you up, lift you up, and took you over here to Jesus' kingdom and put you down in it. Boom. You see that? Mm -hmm. That was the translation. You see? Now look at the scripture. Like I was teaching you. Who have delivered us from the powers of Satan, Satan's kingdom, and sin. And have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. You're not even in Satan's kingdom no more. If you've given your life to Jesus Christ, you don't walk in the kingdom of darkness. You walk in the kingdom of light, which is the kingdom of his dear son. So we live by the kingdom principles. Okay? These, this, is the principles of the kingdom. The word of the living God. Okay? Now watch. <clears throat> In God's kingdom, now watch this, do you think there is sickness and disease. No. No. It's not in God's kingdom. You know the problem with humanity? Or with us who have given our lives to Jesus Christ? You know what our problem is? We try to walk in God's kingdom and in the world. That's our problem. Instead of just walking according to the kingdom principles. Amen. You know how you got one foot in the church and one foot in the world. You have one foot in the church and another foot in the doctor's office. One foot, you see what I'm saying? We are so used to from being raised up to living according to the world, that when we came and gave our lives to Christ, we still think that we're living in the world. So, we have to do what? Renew our mind. Romans uh, chapter 12 verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Trans... What? Transformed. What? Watch this. Let me show you what you were transformed in. Conform means to, 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 um, to act like. To continue to act like. To continue to be to act like that. Okay? But see, you're not. Transform, conform means to continue to act like. That means like when you came out of the world, you still want to act like the world. Though you're not in the world. Your life, you gave your life to Jesus Christ. But you still, and have you noticed that as you continue to act like the world and go back to the same crowds you used to hang out with, somehow you just don't quite mm, fit in? That's right. Yeah, you ever recognize that? You'd be like, man, I, I don't even belong here. I don't even know why I'm sitting there. The, the, the nasty jokes ain't funny no more. The, the cigarettes start to stink. The alcohol don't taste right. You know, you don't want to go, you, you get kind of convicted when you look at something you ain't supposed to be. Or you do, you know why? Because you're still trying to fit in to something. You're still trying to conform to something that 
and you're not a part of. So the scripture says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. By the renewing of your mind. Now watch the transformation. The transformation is this. It's kind of like, you know, that little caterpillar that keeps that's crawling out on the edge of the tree. But yet at a certain time, it links onto that tree. You know, it starts to hang off on that tree in this little cocoon, the little pops thing on the tree that flips back and forth. Well, as it's inside of the cocoon, it starts to change. The body starts to change, and it's a it's a kind it's where we get the word transform. It's like where we get the word uh, uh, mortar mortar. What's the word? Meta. Morphosis. You see, it's where when you're inside that cocoon. If any man be in Christ, he is a new. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. So, so what's taking place is because this uh, butterfly is in. I mean, not butterfly. This worm caterpillar is inside that cocoon transforming into beautiful are you, are you not here I'm trying to tell you something that's beautiful because it has it has changed it has not it's not conforming but it is being transformed by the renewing of are you don't hear what I'm trying to tell you somebody out of here you see what I'm saying? It's yes, starting Lord. to transform. That's right. So the scripture tells us, and be not conformed unto this world, but be ye transformed mm, right. by the renewing of yeah. your mind. So that when that butterfly finally steps out, I mean when that caterpillar steps out, it's no more caterpillar, right. but it's a big, pretty, beautiful yeah, looking thing right. that flies away. It's a it's a butterfly. Uh, yes. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what Jesus, that's, that's what happens here. Yes, Lord. That's what happens here. And so, now watch. So, let's look at some scripture. Because I got, I, I know I don't have a lot of time. And I, I well, I got to do what God tells me to do. So, we might be here for a minute. And I already got several, I mean, not several, I got ideas on other messages, and I have one already prepared, but I have to finish this one. And uh, the next one in the series, this is like a series, so I'm going to have to start calling this a series, because it's been like three or four times, this is about the fourth time, isn't it, right? So, let's look at sickness. And I want to share with you how all this got, how all this came about, because some people don't really understand that what sickness and disease is, and where did it come from? Hmm. How did it get here? How did it get on us? How did that baby be formed with that deficiency? How was AIDS, and how was tuberculosis, and how was the flu and how, you know, uh, sinuses and all this stuff come to the earth. How? Well, I'm glad you asked. Teach us. Turn, turn, to the, turn to the book of Genesis and let's look at this. It's real simple. I mean, I can't say it's real simple. I guess, you know, you have to be uh, born again. How about that? You know? <laughs> yeah. We're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. That's that's a message in another, in and of itself, another message some other time. So, let's go to Genesis and look at some accounts here and see what we have. Uh, yeah, yeah, what we have in Genesis chapter 1. We're going to start with the creation 
And we're going to break this down and go all the way up through sickness and, and all this good stuff. That's why I, I hope y'all, if you're going to join us, join with us, subscribe. Subscribe. Uh, click the like button. Subscribe with us because we're going to be doing some teaching. We're going to be breaking this stuff down. We're going to be eating this Bible. And I'm not in a hurry. I don't plan on going anywhere. So, if you want to continue with us and you want to um, get the messages and be taught the word of the living God, hit that like button, subscribe, and become a part of it, okay? Amen. Where you'll get every message and you'll hear everything that we say, okay, and everything that we do. But let's keep going. Look at Genesis, starting with the creation, and watch this, Genesis chapter 1, let's look at verse 26 and go through to verse 28. Now watch, it says, And God said, now this is during the creation, right after the creation, He creates man. He says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion, rule, reign, kingship. Understand those things, those terminology. Rule, reign, kingship. That's what it is. And let them, and let us make, he says in 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And subdue it. That in itself. Great, great word. And subdue it. Meaning put it under your control. Make it bow to you. Make it, take it. Take ownership of it. And subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. I want to say something real quick about the subdue. Subdue is taking control over it. Okay? Now watch this. If it's already yours, why do you have to take control over it? Why do you have to make it bow down? Why do you have to make it subject? That's right. Unless there is something already here trying to fight you for. But that, I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to leave you with that. <laughs> but anyway, okay. So he tells them that. Now look, let's jump over to chapter 2. And look at verse 15. And we're going to go from 15 to 17. And watch what it says. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. <laughs> to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, okay, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely, that means ain't no if, ands, or buts about it, thou shalt surely die. Surely. You're going to die. Now watch. Take this in mind. Adam don't know what death is. Look. Adam ain't never 
never seen nothing die. You don't really know what death is. You know, because if you know the, the, the about the fruit, every seed bore its own seed. So every fruit, I mean, had its own seed in it. So when it fell to the ground, they replanted. No animal was killed. Um, truthfully, I would probably be like, what, 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 what excuse me, Lord. <laughs> you said I'm going to surely die, but uh, what does death mean? I've never, I'm, everything here is life. <laughs> I mean, you know, trees, birds, everything. Um, I've, not, I've never seen a bird fall to the ground and die. I don't really know what that is. Everything that I've seen live. And as a matter of fact, uh, we created to live forever. Death has not entered in. He doesn't even know what death is. Death, ain't in, death don't enter into the world until he eats what God told him not to. My Bible tells me that the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. In Romans 3.23, for the wages of sin is death. That's right. Okay? So, God tells him he's going to die, but he's never seen anything die. But watch what takes place. Okay? Now go to Genesis chapter 3. Chapter 3. Now this is after the fact that God has now made Adam and Eve. Okay? It's not good that man should be alone. All one. We know that. Alone. Adam, and let me, let me share this with you. When God said this to Adam, well let me just, okay Lord, I can't skip. So we got to go back. Okay. Verse 17, surely die. Look at verse 18. And the Lord said in verse chapter 2, verse 18, he says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. Now watch. I will make and help me for him. And out of the ground the Lord formed, and we know every beast, and we go down. But what? Okay. Let's go down. And verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of, the, of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead. And the rib was and the rib was the Lord God had taken from Adam, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Now let's go back. I want to break some of this down for you. Okay? It says here that God takes Adam in verse 18 and says to him, and God said, it is not good that man should be alone. The word alone here means all one. Long, singular, all one. He was everybody, everything else on the earth, God, there was two of, there was two doves, there was two uh, cow, I mean, a cow and a bull, there was two frogs, there was two of everything. I mean, there was two of everything, except it was only Adam by himself, okay? But it, and Adam was all one. Now what? When God went to the ground with Adam, 
He never had to, after he had formed Adam from the dust of the ground, he never had to go back a second time. Everybody that is anybody on the face of this earth was all in that one body, Adam. He was alone. He was all one. See that? Now watch. He says there, uh, verse 18, And the Lord God said unto, I mean, he said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him help me from him, for him. A help meet. There's a purpose for Adam. There was a purpose in which God had created Adam. God wanted a family, and that family was coming out of Adam. And he needed a female to meet, or the word meet was to give him the ability, meet Abel. Someone that was able to help him in the conquest God was giving him. Or not conquest, not to conquer, but to help him to do or fulfill the plan and destiny that God had given him. How about that? Everybody, there was anybody was in this one body. Adam. And they needed to get out. And the only way they could get out is to come out and go in or through an incubator soul to bring humanity to the earth. And we would be the family of God. Amen. You see? Watch. Go to verse 21. And watch this. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Notice, God never went back to the ground. Never. Gosh, Lord, I hear you. And the rib was the Lord God had taken from man. Made he a woman. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined unto his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Somebody is going to get is getting this revelation. Amen. Somebody God is getting giving them this revelation. Yes. This is why God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, Lord. What? 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 And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. But watch this. And the man said, This is now bone of my bone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is now bone of my bone, now watch, and flesh, exactly like my flesh. In other words, they were the only two humans on the earth. Adam had seen all the cows, all the ducks, all the alligators, all the elephants, all the, and gave them all names. 
And out of all of them, there wasn't a woman running around there. Nobody like him. You see? Because when he was giving the names, he was like, that's a male and that's a female duck and that's a alligator and that's a hippo and, a, and that, you see? And they would recreate. They could recreate. But there was no one there for him to recreate with. He says, so, when God presents her, he says, this is now bone exactly like my bone. You see? Mm -hmm. Flesh <laughs> exactly like my flesh. Uh, but hold up. There's a few minor adjustments here. So she shall be called woman. Why? Because she is the man, meaning flesh like my flesh, that has a womb. She is a female. Mm -hmm. Why? She is the male counterpart of me that can carry the fetus. Why? Because at one time, Adam was all one. He was all alone. So God pulled out a counterpart, okay, that was a female so that he could place his seed into the incubator soul and recreate humanity. Another child. You see? So this is why I don't understand this gay rights stuff. It goes so far off of what creation teaches us and what God teaches us that it doesn't make any sense. Somebody that said I was born that way. No, you wasn't. That's a spirit that makes you think you're gay and keeps you messing with people of the same sex. Because that is not how God created you. Creation of humanity comes from a male and a female in which God had joined together. And the two become one in his son. Amen? Amen. Okay. Now, so now we have creation. Adam and Eve. <laughs> Watch this. Adam and Eve. Now we're talking about sickness. Okay? We're talking about sickness and disease. How did it get here? Okay? We're talking about the gospel. Is it a prosperity gospel? A prosperity message? Okay? Now watch. And we're talking about going from sickness and disease to health and healing through the gospel. Okay? Now watch. In verse 3, I mean chapter 3, it begins. Now, the so the okay. Now the serpent 
was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, <laughs> Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now watch. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now watch this, because she already knew good. God said when he created everything, that's what he said, it is good. He didn't create anything and say it is evil. Everything was created good. The only thing she didn't know was what was evil. And that's the problem. We always are curious about what's on the other side. That's how children are. They grow up. Mom and daddy said, don't go there. Don't do this. Don't sneak over somebody's house when you ain't supposed to. Don't drink this. Don't smoke that. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't be on the phone late at night. When I go to sleep, you make sure your butt goes to bed. Why? Because there's a reason for it. We're trying to only give you what's good. And keep you from the evil side of things. I remember my mom and daddy, don't smoke, don't drink. I couldn't wait to smoke and drink. Why? Because they said don't do it. And then I saw my daddy do it. And all it did was make me want it because they was doing it. My mother wasn't, but my daddy and them, they was doing it. I was ready to do it too. And he kept telling me, no, don't, 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 don't. But I was wondering why if you're doing it, why, you know, can I do it? But sometimes when you're already in evil, you know what evil is and you try to keep people away from it. Don't follow me down this road. How many of y'all out there and around here want their children to be better than what they were? Mm -hmm. And what they are. See, I didn't realize that until I became an adult, became grown, you know, but not early age, not a young adult, when I became an older adult, then I began to say, okay, I got the revelation. Now I know why daddy didn't want me to become like him. And he was trying to keep me from evil. You see? Okay, but watch, watch this. So, let's keep looking. It says here, for God, verse 5, 3 verse 5, For God does know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now watch. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise. Now be very careful. Watch this. She took of the tree thereof. Stop. If you notice the scriptures, that comma, right there, nothing happens. She took thereof, okay, and did eat. Stop. And did eat. Nothing happened. But then it says, and gave also into her, unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So she took it, she ate first, right? <laughs> then she gave it to him second. But when she ate, nothing happened. 
But when she gave it to him, look at what happened. And the eyes of both were open. The eyes of both were open. Now watch. The reason her eyes was open was because his eyes were open. She came from him. See that? God said to him, in the day that you eat thereof, and he said nothing about both of them. He says in the day, let's go back, look. Verse 17 of, verse, of chapter 2. The Lord God, well let's start at 16, look at this. The Lord God commanded who? The man saying, he told the man saying this, watch. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But watch this too. Go back to chapter 1 verse 27. So God created man, watch, in his own image. In the image of God created he, what's that next word? Him. Okay? In the creation, it was a him. It wasn't them. It wasn't her. Everybody that was created on the earth was coming out of him just like everybody comes out of God. Amen. See? That's why God said, man, your head Not your wife. You're here. She comes out of you. Everything comes out of you. Male. Man. Adam. God created him. Now watch, watch. When him fell, mm -hmm. Everything in him fell to. Hmm. You see that? Yes. When him sinned, <laughs> or he, how about that? <laughs> when he fell, everybody in him fell to. When he sinned, everybody in him became sinners. Mm. For all have sinned and come short of the glory. See that? All have sinned, because of Adam, and come short of the glory. In his image. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. See? All have sinned. We all miss the mark. Why? Because of the first him that was created in his image. Because in him, in his body, was everybody. And when his body fell into sin, everybody fell into sin because we were all in Adam's body. So when Adam ate of the fruit, when 
Eve first ate, nothing happened. When him, when Adam ate and swallowed, guess what? Both their eyes were open. You see that? <laughs> oh man, there's so much. There is so much. So much more to share with you, but I can't go into that today. But when Adam said, everybody said, now watch this. Then, look at this, uh, verse 7, and both, and the eyes of both were open, and they knew good from evil, <laughs> and they knew that they were naked. Why? Because, and this is another, there's so many things to come out of this. But they were uncovered. Their innocence was removed. Their innocence was removed. They are, they're like, ooh, time to hide. <laughs> First they was innocent. They were like, oh, la, 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 la. And God said, don't eat it. Don't eat that fruit. So what was it? What was sin? Oh, don't eat of that tree. What was sin? Sin was disobedience to the command. Remember the scripture said, and God commanded the man. So sin, all sin is, is disobedience to the commands with an S of God. If God tells you don't, you don't. If you do, you sin. God says don't lie. Boom, you sin. Wages of sin is death. You see? You sin. God says don't sleep with somebody that ain't your husband. Boom. God says, don't sleep with somebody that you ain't married to. Boom. You said. Simple as that. You disobeyed a command from God. Disobedience. You sinned. Period. Okay? So, Adam said, now watch this. God told Adam, he said this, in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely, thou shalt surely, no offense or but, Bible says God is not alive. You shall surely die. Now, Adam didn't know what death was, but he ate it anyway, because she gave it to him. He followed her. He ate it. Okay? Now, well, one day I'm going to teach you how that transpired and who actually fell. People always say, well, um, Adam gave it over to Satan. No, that's not true. That's not what Scripture says. And uh, people, I, 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 I hope somebody will write in and beg to differ that. That's not what my Bible tells me. It doesn't tell me Adam did that. That Adam gave it to Satan. Adam and Satan, if you study the scripture, didn't even have any dealings with one another. Hmm. No dealings with one another. He talked to the woman. People say, well, Adam, Adam sinned and gave it all up to the devil. No, 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 no. He didn't give it to the devil. 
I'm gonna just let you know something real quick. He gave it to her. She gave it to the devil. You know that? He gave it to her. She gave it to Satan. And Satan said, I got it now. That belongs to me. <laughs> he couldn't deal directly with Adam. He had to be no, he had to deceive it from them. How do I don't know? Okay, well, I'm glad you asked that question. I'll go ahead and share it with you. Today. Go to the book of Romans. Let's see here. See, this is why I like these studies. I like studies. Man, this is some good stuff. When you study. Because then you get to show. But I got to, I didn't know I was going to go here. I would have looked up the scriptures. Even though I know. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I just know it. But it's okay. Because it's in Romans. Oh, okay, I know where it is. Thank you, Lord. The Lord just told me. All right. Uh, oh, but that's uh, the whole... Okay, turn with me to 
to the book of Romans real quick. Romans, there we go. Hallelujah. Some of y'all probably already knew it and got there before I did. But Romans chapter 6, let's look at this. Let's look at verse 16. Now watch what it says. Romans chapter 6. Y'all got it? When you get it, say amen. Amen. Romans chapter Amen. 6, Amen. verse 16. I might have enough time to finish this, and then we're going to go over this another get, uh, one more again next week. But we're going to keep go going until we get it all done. I'm not in a hurry, Amen. and I ain't got nowhere to go and nowhere to be. Okay? So let's watch. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. It says, Know ye not to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey. Now watch this. His servants are, ye are, to whom you obey. In other words, when I yield myself to someone or some thing to do what it tells me, at the moment I do it, I become its or their servant immediately. I am what you understand. Now watch. Watch. Know ye not the whom to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey. His servants ye are to whom you obey. Whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. In other words, whoever I yield myself to obey, good or evil, when I yield myself to it, I am its servant. Now, another word for servant here is slave. Slave. I become its slave. It becomes my master. Okay? It's just like this. Back in this day, when Paul wrote this, and we know it as African Americans through history, that we, we, when we become the servant or slave of a master, everything that we own is given to us by our master. And everything that we own, that we get, belongs to our master. 100%. In other words, my, 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 my master could take my wife and sell her. Why? Sell her. Because it's his, even though she's mine. My children, he could take my children and sell them. My bed. My chair, my house, and make me go somewhere else. He can say, no, this is not your house anymore. You're going to sleep outside in that little town or whatever. Why? Because everything that's mine belongs to my master. Now watch. So, when the woman ate, she yielded unto Satan. That means everything she had belonged to him. When he ate, he yielded unto her. That means everything he had, Adam, he had, it belongs to her. Adam was the head. He was made in the image of God. He had all creation. He was given authority over to have all dominion over everything in the earth. So when he ate, guess what? She became his master. He became her servant. So he gave the earth to her. When she ate, she became Satan's servant. 
So she gave it to Satan. And Satan said, now, I am the God of this earth. I reign. I rule. Do you see that? They yielded themselves. Adam yielded to her, became her servant. <laughs> he obeyed her. And he was the head. This is why God deals with them the way he does when he passes judgment and condemns them and said, Woman, because you have done this thing, In childbearing, the seed that you will bring from the man will cause you pain. You see? And we're out of time. But I would love to teach some more on this. But I got a lot more for us next week. God bless you.